You are listening to a Pleasure Podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Hey, privates, it's your girl Cox here, and I am switching things up today and bringing you a preview of a podcast that I have been loving, and I think you're going to too. So it is another podcast from the Pleasure Podcast Network, and it is called Holly Randall Unfiltered. It is hosted by Holly Randall. She is a 25-year veteran of the adult industry, director, photographer, and I don't know if you know this, but she's kind of a porn Nepo baby. And I say that in the best way possible. Like her mom is this kind of iconic erotic photographer and her dad worked on some really cool projects with her mom and they're just kind of like a badass famous family in the industry and this is reminding me I need to have Holly on the show to talk to her about that but basically on her show Holly Randall unfiltered she interviews people who make up this vastly misunderstood industry from performers to directors to sex educators and therapists On her show, she's exploring the good and the bad stories to lift the veil on the secrecy surrounding porn and to give voice to those who truly understand what it's like to work in this thriving but highly stigmatized career. Listen, we all know porn is the dirty little secret that many people enjoy but also publicly shun. Stories of abuse, trafficking, shame surrounding this industry are constantly being regurgitated by mainstream media. But what is so often excluded from this narrative is the voices of actual sex workers, people who are active in the industry today. And what they have to say about their chosen profession might surprise you. So forget everything you think you know about porn because this show is gonna open your eyes and possibly change your mind. Holly Randall Unfiltered is available anywhere you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube. It's actually really fun to watch the show on YouTube. And she is on Instagram and TikTok as well. So find out more at hollyrandallunfiltered.com. And with that, I am going to share a clip with you from one of my favorite episodes. It is episode 262 with adult superstar Adriana Chechik. And oh my God, these two babes together have the most amazing amazing conversation. Check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so excited about my guest today. She has been one of my most requested guests, and she's somebody I've wanted to have on the podcast for a long time. So I am absolutely so thrilled to have the one and only, like truly the fucking one and only Adriana Chechek here today. Yay. Hi. <laughs> you look adorable as always. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my God. I love your outfit. Thank you. Um, so Adriana, I guess, God, where do we even start? I mean, you're such a big star now and um, I know you've done a ton of podcasts, mm-hmm. but I guess let's assume that someone has never seen any of your other interviews. Let's mm-hmm. just talk about the beginning. Like let's talk about how you grew up and then how you got into adult. Okay. Um, so I grew up in, uh, in and out of foster care, uh, mainly in Pennsylvania. So East coast. Um, and it was a pretty crazy life. I think, um, I actually think everything I went through in my past was really, really set me up for porn because I learned how to say no. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. I learned the right and the, the wrong. Yeah. And, um, from there, uh, when I was about 16, I emancipated myself from the state. Mm -hmm. So I had like all the privileges of an 18 year old and I worked at a restaurant for about a year. And then I went to college. I was in Drexel for, uh, bioengineering for a year, decided math was way too hard. (laughs) Tried to switch to biochem. Uh, and in the midst of being a biochem major, my girlfriend who was a stripper and I was strapped for cash was like, oh, you should come work at the strip club. So I was one night into being a cocktail waitress. And I remember seeing her get off stage with all the money that she had. And my second night, I actually went up and started stripping. And the money was so good. I was having such a fun time. It's kind of the only time I've ever like let loose since I grew up um, mainly with like strict families. Mm -hmm. Um, It was like my first taste of freedom. And 
I was making so much. I was just like, you know, I don't think I really want to go to school anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I went from there and traveled around the U.S. for about – uh, so I started porn at 21. I started traveling around the U.S. at 20. So I did one full year of just travel stripping, which is amazing money. And you kind of follow like golf competitions, bikers. Um, so you make really good money. And then I ended up in Miami. I was partying a lot. And I started to get used to like sleeping all day, working all night. And for me, I figured out I'm the type of person that likes to be awake in the daylight, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think they call it seasonal depression. Mm. So I felt like I was kind of having like the seasonal depression. Um, and a gentleman came in and was like, hey, do you want to be in a movie? And I don't think I thought it was a porno. I was just like, sure, I'll be in a movie thinking he was like lying or something. And I showed up to set and it was the Bang Bros. Um, I think it was Come Fiesta. Right. So they just like make you get tested the morning of and mm-hmm. then they drive you to set and you're like, oh, you're doing a porno. And I remember being like, hmm, OK. And I was like, what's the worst that can happen? And I remember specifically thinking in my mind, like, I don't have family that would be upset. The half siblings I have were all really cool. And the only thing I could foresee in the future being an issue is if I wanted to have children, how would that affect my children? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I grew up in foster care babysitting. It was the best birth control. So I never want kids. So I was like, okay, fine, let's do this. But it was just such a good experience that, you know, I was like able to to get paid a good amount of money, work at 8 a.m., be done by 5 p.m. and and be sober. And I really say like moving forward, I'm like porn in a way, I think helped save my life and put me on a good structure because my mother was addicted to drugs, is addicted to drugs. Um, people from my family are addicted to drugs and I'm the only one that's not. And I think the structure of porn really is the reason why I didn't because you can't go to set fucked up. Like, yeah, maybe some girls show up that way, but it's very, very rare and they don't do a good scene or they don't last. People don't hire them. Like you really have to treat your body good to, to work. And I think that was like a blessing in disguise for me. I'm glad that you said that because that goes counter to what so many people think about porn. People yeah. think that everybody's on drugs. People think that it's like a big party scene and, you know, everybody's just like this damaged psycho deviant. And yeah. it, I try to explain to people, it's kind of one of the reasons I started this podcast. Like it's such a job. It's such like a nine to five yeah, job. Yeah. Like you have to be there on time and, you know, we have – like a shot list of like things I have to hit and Mm -hmm. I have to make sure, you know, like I generally have like a guide for my client of like all these things I have to do. It's not like just people like laying around and and party. Yeah, exactly. And I know some sets are like that I've heard, but like most sets and definitely like the more prestigious mainstream companies, they're, they're very structured. Yeah. I've only ever been on sets where it's like, um, people smoking weed. Yeah. And I've actually walked off three of those sets Mm. or I had a, I had one of the crazier agents, but he was good in the sense I could call him Mm -hmm. and he would lock it down. Like everyone would be terrified. But I will say one of my like funniest fan experiences was probably my blow bang. Mm -hmm. I had gotten a bunch of guys to do a fan blow bang. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was like, I'll give you like a flashlight photo, you know, if you just want to come, come do it and I'll pay for your test. Mm -hmm. And I had, I think 17 guys, uh, three of them were virgins and some of them flew all from different States to California to shoot this. And it was so wild because, um, not only they were, were they really, really good? Like they put me on, they put me on a, a spinning stool. And they were like spinning me around, like fucking my face and everything like that. And it was so good. Like at the end of it, um, I was like, wow, that's so good. And at the time I had a boyfriend and an assistant and I was like, whoa, this was so good. We, we filmed 58 minutes nonstop. Mm -hmm. Everyone came on time. And then my boyfriend at the time turns to me and he's like, "Mm, I gave everyone a Viagra. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, ah, he was like, I wanted to make sure you had a good day, you know? (laughs) But it's ironic because I find that fans sometimes are better than male performers because um, especially when it comes to like multiple guys and having to come on time because they're so excited. They really want to try hard. And then um, they don't have that kind of jaded, jaded mentality. Like, um, you know, I I love our male performers, but 
to get them all to come when you want them to come if you're doing like multiple pop shots is really fucking hard. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of them's like, oh, I need two minutes in the corner. Yeah. So I find the fans are great because if they see another guy come on you, they're like, oh, I'm done. And then, yeah. you know, come on you. So it's like perfect. It is a weird like chain reaction, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. like one guy comes, like I've talked to people about Bukaki, like Bukaki scenes like this. And it's like a weird, like one guy comes and then like all the rest of them, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's really bizarre. Yeah. And then it's like the worst if somebody's got to take their like two minutes to themselves, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, everything was perfect. I you know. know. And then you just sit there with all this come on your face and, you, and it's starting to get cold and like yeah. maybe dry on your face and you're like come the fuck on dude yeah, and then yeah. like you're not in the moment anymore exactly exactly <laughs> with all your experience in the adult industry what is is there anything that you wish you had done differently is there anything that you know now that you wish you had known getting in um uh there's two two big things i would have done differently um well well two things i wish i wish i could have known and stuff um the first thing is you know, I wish I would have thought more on not how the actions are going to impact my future um, and how people are going to view me for it, but how the emotions are going to impact my connection with others. Mm. So I often think like as a CEO, you you sometimes sacrifice hanging out with your kids. Um, I worry one of my biggest fears uh, that I'm trying to get over is um, did I sacrifice my uh, emotional connection with people to do some of these first or to have true intimate passion with people for this type of career. Mm. Um, because while I've experienced passion on camera and had very, very beautiful intimate moments, um, Adriana has gotten so big that it's a little hard to connect with anybody on my mm. personal level now, like yeah. to meet somebody you know, it, it, it sucks. Like if I go on a date, I, I often will get, uh, plan a date with somebody. And then slowly the date will turn into being an hour later. Then it's eight o'clock at night. Oh, meet me at a hotel. I get to the hotel. They just want to bang or, mm. you know, it's, it, it's taken a lot of, a lot of, um, I guess a lot of intimacy from me. Like people don't give me the respect of giving that, giving me the treat a woman, how she should be treated moments. So that kind of sucks. Um, I'm hoping I'll get it. I have a fear, but, you know, maybe as I grow and change um, and get older, I'll find somebody to do those things with. And then um, if I could take anything back in my career, it'd be the public actions that I did that weren't for companies. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I squirted on an escalator. Mm -hmm. While that did a lot for my brand in the sense of making me catapult and people were like, wow, this is crazy. What I realize now is those moments are actually hindering me from um, average society wanting to work with me because they only see, see me in that light. Mm -hmm. Um, they also hinder me in a sense where, you know, people think to do those type of things, you're a party or you're on drugs. Um, so I wish that I was able to see my brand when I was younger, so I could understand the impact of my actions on my brand at all times. Yeah. So I could be a little more honed in because there's a difference in doing porn and, and doing crazy things. And then there's also a difference between like living those crazy acts. Mm -hmm. So, and like now if I go out in public and I see girls, like I, I, I went to a party and these girls were like fucking in the middle of the street and, you know, I was like that. So I can understand the freeing exhibition of it. But at the same time, like, I'm just like, some people don't want to see that. Now you're exposing it to them. Yeah. And, you know, like I kind of almost see some of the actions I had like as careless mm -hmm. because I didn't think about anybody else around me. I just did it for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. So I would have had a little more respect and a little more um, awareness for other people. So that was a preview of Holly Randall Unfiltered. And I think you need to check out the whole episode. It's episode 262. It's with Adriana Chechik, a really cool adult superstar who is actually in the process of retiring. And she is such an interesting person. She gets into her upbringing in foster care. She talks about career regrets, why she finds gangbangs empowering. This was fascinating. They even wind up talking about climate change. I mean, this conversation spans the gamut and it's really interesting, like basically hour long conversation. So head on over to Holly Randall Unfiltered 
It is, again, another show on the Pleasure Podcast Network. And check out the whole episode. And then you can tune in every Wednesday wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you are thirsty for some more content after that, my back catalog is teeming, baby. I have the story of my happy ending massage from Tokyo, which I found very empowering. I've got an interview with the world record holder in squirting. I have an interview with a former lusty lady, Jane Swift, who talks about sex worker social movements. I have a mind trip episode on ayahuasca in LA. I got the Cleavana orgasm enhancer treatment and reported on it. And of course, how to turn your breakup into your superpower with a bunch of babes who are experts on the subject and fisting 101 with Alexander Cheeves. So this should set you up for a very horny weekend of consuming content privates. I hope you enjoy it. I will be back next week, privates, with another all new episode of Private Parts Unknown. And in the meantime, stay curious and keep exploring. <laughs>